Hi, my name is Tom Antos, and in this video I'm going to test out the new Blackmagic uh, production 4K camera. Uh, I'm going to test it out alongside uh, this Canon 7D, which is sort of a typical or middle ground uh, DSLR camera. And uh, I'm going to do a bunch of tests, uh, sort of testing out different you know, features and capabilities of this camera. Uh, we'll test out uh, how much latitude this camera can handle. Uh, also, we'll test out the, the, the rolling shutter issues, or if there are any. Uh, this is actually one of the the first few cameras that has a what's called a global shutter. Uh, so unlike your typical DSLRs or even uh, uh, Red Epic or, or Scarlet, it, it shouldn't have really any rolling shutter issues. Uh, also, I'm gonna test out uh, the low light capabilities of this camera. And I wanna do sort of a, your typical lit uh, scenario or scene where we can really kind of see how it handles the skin tones and, and all the little you know details and that, that kind of stuff. Uh, anyways, I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoy this uh, this video and uh, let's get started. Uh, so the first scene is outside, which is going to sort of test out how it handles, you know, this bright, you know, sunlight and, you know, going basically from the shadow, sort of a shadowy area here. And then as the camera pans over, we go into this really bright, you know, blown out, you know, a highlight, especially there in the snow. Uh, you know, as you can see, the camera actually handles handles it pretty well. It's, I'm not gonna say it's the best you know, uh, camera when it comes to you know, basically the latitude that it can handle. Even the previous Blackmagic camera, the, 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 the Cinema 2.5 camera uh, that's been released a year before this one, it actually has, uh, I believe it's technically, they're saying uh, it's, it's about one extra f-stop, but in my experience, I've actually shot a, a, f a film on it uh, last year. And, uh, and I gotta say that, that that camera really sort of handled, you know, the really, really extreme latitude, uh, you know, sort of highlights to darks very well and definitely better than this camera. Now, this camera is not horrible, uh, especially when you compare it to, you know, the, the DSLR, like in this case, it's the Canon 7D, but at the same time, it's not, uh, it's not great either. Uh, so, you know, when you look at, for example, this, uh, this shot here by the window, uh, you can see also that, like, you know, you can you can retain a lot of the details outside the window and, and still get a nice exposure inside, versus the the you know the the, the Canon 7D. It's just you know it's you get some details in there, but uh, but it's you know it's obviously not as much as um, as you, you're gonna get with this camera. Uh, now, when it comes to the rolling shutter issues, this camera is amazing because it doesn't have any. Uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, it, this camera actually uses a, what's called a, a global shutter. Uh, meaning it captures the whole frame, you know, instantaneously at once, as opposed to scanning each line, which is what most, uh, you know, digital cameras are, these days do. Uh, even, you know, including the the Red Epic, they, they scan the lines basically individually. Now they, that happens very fast, but when uh, when there are things happening, for example, in your frame, like uh, you know, very fast motion from left to right, and and especially when you see like very straight edges. That's when you'll notice that part of the image gets scanned of a slightly later, uh, you know, basically part, and then that causes it, the image kind of to, to look like it's wobbling. Uh, so this camera doesn't have those issues. Also, another problem with the rolling shutter cameras, like the you know the DSLRs, is that if you have anything, any kind of for example, strobing light or, or like even even gunshots in, in some cases, like the, the muzzles, uh, the, the, the 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 flare from from the, from the, from the muzzle of the guns. Uh, the problem with that is when things happen that fast, especially when lighting changes that fast, again, the rolling shutter will basically sometimes tends to pick it up and then basically in results that in, in, in half of your image being overexposed or having the flash in it and half of it, you know, it's, uh, is, is without it. Uh, whereas this camera, again, because it captures that, that frame instantaneously, it either captures that flash or it doesn't. So you will never get this kind of a half, you know, weird looking uh, uh, frame. Uh, so that, that's a great thing about the camera. Now when it comes to low light, this camera does, does not perform very well. Uh, as you can see up here, uh, when we were shooting outside here in the street, when just using the available street light, and this is at ISO 800, and that's actually the highest that this camera can go. So as you can see, just even, even this, the, the actual, you know, uh, just, just how sensitive the, the sensor on this camera is, it's pretty horrible. It's only, you know, I guess 800, you know, ISO or ASA. And um, and it's uh, and not only that, but if you're using the 800 ASA and you're using it in such a low light situation like this one, you're gonna get a lot of vertical bending, which is uh, these lines that are go from top and bottom. Uh, so it just basically doesn't look good. So I, I, if I were you, uh, and, you know, if, you know, as, as an advice to using this camera, pretty much avoid not using the 800 ASA. In fact, this camera is actually rated or it's it's the actual you know uh, uh image sensor is actually 
400 ASA, so that's the ideal uh, shooting situation. But you know, sometimes when you need to get a little bit extra kick, you you, you can you can use the 800 ASA, but use it in situations where you actually have enough light to get a, still a decent exposure. Because if you have a lot of darks in the area, uh, you're just going to get a lot of you know, like I said, vertical bending. Uh, whereas DSLRs, in this case, again, the Can 7D performs way better. Uh, this is an 800 ISO, and as you can see, it you know doesn't have any issues with with really with noise or anything like that. Not only that, but you know, f uh, as you're probably aware, uh, the DSLRs uh, can can go you know really really much higher when it comes to the the, the uh, sensitivity of the camera. So you know I, they're not limited to just 800 ISO. Uh, now another actually bad thing when it comes to you know the ISO or ASA settings of this camera is that. It only really has three, which is uh, 200 ISO. You can go lower than that, 400, which is its you know native sort of you know setting, uh, and then the 800. So you only three have three settings, and like I said, you're probably going to use you know, the 200 whenever you're shooting outside, 800 whenever you're shooting in low light situations, and uh, you know and 400 probably when you just you know sort of a typical lit scenario where you can control the lights very well. Uh, but uh, but that so also means that, like I said, when you're shooting in low light situations, you really does not mean that you can't get a nice dramatic looking dark image. It just simply means that you don't want you do not want to do it and actually by not having enough light there, you actually still want to expose your subject and get a lot of light and then just simply you know like I said darken it either either in post or or by you know not using such high you know, ASA settings in the camera. And 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 the, and the the shutter angle and that kind of stuff. Uh, now, when it comes to the you know shooting outside in daylight, uh, you're you're gonna need definitely uh, ND filters and uh, you know circular ND filters. You know or, 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 or yeah, basically circular gradual uh, ND filters are probably one way um, to go. Uh, although with this camera also you'll, you'll probably end up uh, you know getting into a, a rig because this camera is just as you can see it's not very well designed to be handheld and that kind of stuff uh, so you since you're going to invest in a rig I'd probably say you know invest in a good matte box and you might as well just use traditional you know glass uh, ND filters they're going to be crisper sharper and they're not going to distort the, your, your colors uh, as, as much as the, as the grad gradual ND filters will and now in the next test, we're just going to test out sort of how this camera handles uh, skin tones and just all kinds of details in your typical sort of, uh, you know, lit scenario. So, uh, you know, as you can see up here, we have the subject kind of coming in. And, uh, and you know, especially if, uh, if, you, if we pause it and you really look at this, the frame, it's, uh, you know, this camera in a properly lit setting, it, this camera handles, you know, basically captures a really beautiful looking image. So, uh, you know, definitely, you know, when you compare it to like DSLRs, it does not mean that you can't get a nice looking image with DSLRs. Uh, it's just, you know, this camera will just, just get you that much more when it comes to the latitude and just sort of how it handles all the details. Uh, even especially the, 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 the moire or how it handles the, the anti-aliasing in the image. Uh, if you look at, for example, here in the subject uh, on his t-shirt there, uh, you can see, you know, compared to the, you know, to the DSLR, uh, this, you know, the Blackmagic camera just does not have those issues. Uh, it, or even, for example, when we look at some of the other scenes, like, for example, uh, the, you know, here when, when the guy is sitting by the window, uh, on the right side there we have a little screen door or mosquito net. Again, on the 70, you can kind of create creates a little noise. And uh, with this camera, it's not visible. Or when you look at, for example, the details there in the house and the brick, uh, again, the 70 just simply does not handle those, those little sharp details uh, as well. Uh, this obviously handles it you know, that well simply because this camera shoots in 4K resolution. Um, so, you know, if, aside from having, you know, just really kind of a clean, crisp image, when it's properly lit, uh, you're also having that extra resolution, which, you know, even if you're not finishing your project right now in 4K, having that extra resolution always gives you more options, whether it's you can punch in, sort of reframe your shots a little bit, or if you want to do uh, post stabilization, like warp stabilizer or something, having that extra resolution always helps uh, so yeah so it's great and, uh, and like I said you know th doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be shooting a 4k project just having that extra resolution uh, it will always come in handy uh, so uh, overall what, what are my, my thoughts of the camera well the camera you know as you can see um, it, 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 it does uh, it does a good job uh, but it, you know when it's when it's used properly meaning it's not a run and gun kind of camera. If, if you're shooting a sort of a real indie low budget production, 
uh, then you're you know where you're gonna be sort of you know out there on let's say outside you know, on on the street without permits, shooting also especially in the evening or at night with uh, and you're just hoping to ca use the available light that's there at the location. Uh, this camera is not for you. Uh, why? Well, because it doesn't handle low light situations very well, but also because it's just not a light, small, easy to handle camera. Like I said, the camera by itself is not light. It's, it's a lot heavier than typical DSLR. But also, it's just very badly designed. It doesn't really have any grips or handles or anything like that. So you will have to invest in sort of a cage or you know handles and probably shoulder shoulder rig, all that stuff. So then automatically just becomes a much bigger camera, a heavier camera. Uh, so again, so it's not as easy to sort of run around with and then, you know, or hang off your neck. And, and like I said, just sort of act like you're a tourist out there walking around with a DSLR taking photos. Um, it, it looks like a proper cinema camera, uh, which actually brings me to my, my next point. If you're, if you're going to use this camera in a proper production setting where, uh, you know, you, you have uh, properly lit scenes and, and things like that, and you're not rushing out there and, you know, and you're really taking the, the time to, to set up and, and, you know, and get really good looking shots, then this camera will perform a lot better than, you know, than a st typical DSLR. Just like, you know, a, a Red Epic or, you know, a, a Scarlet, you know, cameras, uh, you know, will do. Now, when it comes to quick run and gun kind of shooting, like I said, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's not the camera for you. Now, if you're doing, for example, interviews, uh, or even a lot of just basically kind of TV stuff, Again, this camera is great. It is going to perform because, like I said, most of the time you're going to you're going to have a lot of control over the location you're at and be able to set up the lights and that kind of stuff. Uh, not like what a you know a typical kind of gorilla kind of run and gun filmmaker will do. Another uh, sort of bad thing about the camera, which is the same thing as uh, as with its previous you know version of the the, the cinema camera, uh, is the LCD. That's not to say it's a bad LCD. It's a touch screen and uh, you know a screen and it, and it just it, it is very good resolution, you, you know, when you're shooting indoors, it, it is a great looking, uh, uh, sort of, you can say, monitor for framing your shots, you know, focusing all that stuff. What it's horrible at is when you're shooting outside. When you're shooting outside in daylight, this thing becomes uh, like a mirror. It's just, you cannot see anything. And really, the only way to fight this is either to get a better field monitor or even better, a little EVF, uh, you know, with a loop over it. Or, uh, or just simply, you know, when, when I shot a film, you know, with the, or with the previous version of this last year, uh, and we shot it in sunny LA, and you know, like I said, every day, lots of sun. What I ended up doing is just I, I took a, you know, my black T-shirt, I taped it all here to the hood of this, and I sort of draped it over my head, and I would just hold the camera like this right in front of me, and then, like I said, I had this black T-shirt draping so that all this camera would reflect is just black, and uh, and then it worked great. But obviously, it's not an ideal, you know, <laughs> working situation. So I pretty much always had to walk like this. And there were some cases where, you know, I because I, I couldn't see where I was walking, where or I would trip and things like that. So, uh, so that's one horrible thing. Another horrible thing with this is the battery or the lack of of the battery. Uh, this camera has a built-in battery, meaning you cannot remove it or exchange it. You can only just basically charge it. Uh, and I would almost say that you should pretty much when you're buying this camera forget that there's a battery in there Yeah, there is a battery, but it, this battery is more in there sort of as a backup just in case Let's say you're shooting and your actual battery or, or let's say the, the out of your plugged into an outlet But the, the location loses, you know uh, the power then this camera has sort of a great backup power meaning that you can always make sure that you can stop recording Record the whatever you recorded so far onto the card. So, you know, even if you unplug the cable accidentally It's not just gonna corrupt your your hard drive. So that's kind of what it's there for uh, on the website uh, The company says that this internal battery will last you 90 minutes in reality It's more like 20 30 minutes and especially when you're shooting in 4k uh, uh, You know setting and and if uh, especially if you're shooting outside in cold weather and stuff like that it will last you even even less so, like I said, you will have to buy a battery, and it's a 12 to 30 volt, you know, power input that this accepts. So, these batteries are not going to be cheap. Most likely, they're going to be V mount or Anton Bauer uh, type batteries, which are very expensive. And like I said, it's just going to be, uh, it's going to uh, bring up the overall cost of the camera. Now, the camera still, when you consider this, it's actually cheaper than. Uh, uh, f you know, f uh, 5D uh, you know, Mark III, for example. This camera, uh, I'd say, is, is a great investment, and especially because, of, for example, it you know, has the extra resolution 4K, but it handles also the, like I said, those uh, a lot of the scenes much better than um, than even your your Red Epic camera will, because it does not have any of those rolling shutter issues. 
Uh, so that's one great thing about it. So is this camera perfect? No, it's not. But then again, uh, I don't think there is any camera out there that, that's really perfect. Every camera I found has its strengths and weaknesses. So this one, uh, a great resolution, 4K, uh, you know, creates, captures beautiful images and they're in properly lit scenarios. And, uh, you know, and it doesn't have any of those rolling shutter issues. But if you're shooting, like I said, low light situations or if you, you know, want to you know, sort of run and gun out there or, or want to have a small camera where you can really sort of mount it in, in kind of, you know, weird scenarios or a light camera, then that's that, that's where a DSLR would probably be better. Then again, if you want to shoot, for example, slow motion or or, or even higher resolution, you know, or best, maybe slightly better latitude, then that's probably where, for example, like the Red Epic or, you know, or the, the Dragon camera will, will come in. Uh, so, like I said, you know, if every camera sort of has its good and bad things, uh, you know. And, uh, and ideally, you'd probably want to have this camera in your package alongside, you know, a good DSLR camera and, you know, maybe even, a, 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 like I said, a Red Epic camera, you know. Of course, the Red Epic, the reason why I'm not really, you know, I didn't even want to compare this to Red Epic is that because it's just way out of this league in terms of not so much quality, because this camera comes very close to the, the quality of a Red Epic. It's just simply the price. It's just, you know, way, way beyond the, the price point. Whereas this camera is actually something that an average filmmaker can can afford. Like I said, it retails for two, uh, you know, three thousand dollars basically. Uh, now, with all the accessories and extras, you'll probably end up spending more, like four and a half, five thousand um, dollars. But uh, you know, you don't have to. If you want, you can just use the bare bones camera. But you're going to be very limited, that's for sure. Anyways, in the next video, uh, I'm going to show you guys sort of you know different accessories for this camera, what I think is good, what what is bad. And, um, and yeah, and sort of how, you know, what's the best way of basically working with this camera. Uh, now, if you guys want to see the full, uh, you know, comparison of the footage from this camera to the, the Canon 7D and, you know, all, all of its 4K glory, uh, or also if you just want to download the original RAW files uh, to your computer so you can sort of play around with them, uh, then please uh, visit my website. Uh, the links are in the description of this video. Uh, anyways, if you guys want to find out more information about uh, this camera, and uh, then check out my website at tomatosfilms.com. Plus, I also have a lot of other cool equipment, you know, and filmmaking uh, gear reviews over there, uh, as well as a lot of filmmaking uh, tutorials. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this, and uh, I'll see you next time.